It's a pleasant September afternoon, and uh, just wanted to go over a few plants that I happened to get right after the deep freeze earlier this year in 2021 here in North Texas. Um, went on a few walks and got some plants that I brought back. This one, Killia millifolium. It is the softest plant you will ever touch. It was, of course, named after Achilles. Um, it is good for skin uh, conditions. Um, like, uh, oh, I can't think of all of them right now. But uh, basically constant skin infections as well as circulation. Uh, here we have Verbania. And um, these, all three of these that I'm about to discuss, I just pulled straight up out of the ground. They were in pretty loose uh, dry soil, so it was pretty easy. We've got the Verbania halai. Um, it is native to Texas. These pretty little purple flowers. Uh, it has some uh, slight medicinal properties as well, but um, I, I like it in teas. And again, it's starting to form just like the Achillea here from a rootstock. And uh, one of the favorite little surprises. <laughs> Y'all know I have a surprise. This is for someone to figure out. Right here is a fun one. The shadows are casting some interesting light right now. Alright, I'll give you a hint. It's an Artemisia. And it was just blooming around the outskirts of a public park you know, in the tree line. I guess someone around here knows exactly what it is, this Artemisia, because it has been chopped down just as soon as it got any larger. But I saw it when it was just a little sprout, and uh, most of it has died off. It did not like this fresh potting soil. It liked to be deep in the tree line. Alright, we have another one. These ones have some of the prettiest seeds. And one of the most interesting seed pots um, on record that I can find. Um, I've yet to verify the results of this experiment, but we have a Cardiospermum vine. Cardiospermum H. And uh, they have these little itty bitty white flowers. Little tiny white flowers. And then they grow into these balloon pods. What I find interesting is what the Native Americans had to say on it, and I've only found one source. It was uh, someone documenting medicinal properties of plants, and they happened to say combustion of the outer dried husks of these, it takes the strongest man in the world uh, to consume. So I won't be doing it, but I know I got some fam whoop whoop somewhere that will want to partake in the experiment. That's about it for the medicinal plants at the moment that I just happened to grab for free out of the ground. Uh, I got some cactuses. This one got some more started. Uh, I call it the King Tut seed. It was found in King Tut's tomb. Uh, he had seeds of these, Nigella sativa. They're actually just eating the seed alone as a natural MAOI. And they have these pretty little umbilate uh, purple blooms. Oh, holy basil. Starting to bud. Uh, and uh, finally might want to discuss, just as a side note, I always keep so many potentially medicinal things around. The Ajuga reptans, it's done blooming, but uh, got a lot of it. Loves the shade. Of course, coral bells. I've heard some people over in Pacific Island smoke it, like instead of tobacco. Never tried it. And pine, of course. And uh, Phytolacta americana, drying on out. Put some more over here. It's really pretty. And it's not pretty what it does to your system, but the birds love it because they don't digest it. 
It's even pretty after it's lost its berries. But, um, don't eat it when it's a mature plant. Basically after it starts to show purple on the stem. Uh, unless you're looking for, uh, to resolve a bowel obstruction. It'd be pretty unpleasant. Some mint in the front flower beds. Sneeze weed, I need to get rid of that. But, uh, some peppermints. And, um, this, the Romans used. I meant to seed some out this year because I had so much growing last year. Uh, but it is the Lactula cereola. Um, that's the cultivated variety. Now, they actually ended up, they ate it after, they consumed it after meals because it helped them digest and relax, like work towards sleep. Uh, but it contains lactones in it, so if you break it, it'll sap out. Uh, this one is the cultivated variety. While they did work it out, this, while they did uh, make it extinct, literally, this is the next best thing uh, that, that scientists, botanists can agree would be it. And it does come from a more wild type this it also has the purple in it it's another lactula lettuce species it's a wild it's all tangled up in there and uh that's a a rhoda circadia i believe back in there that little purple thing never really used it for much and um wild texas raspberries we we're on a walk in an area where they're digging up for construction and I happened to spot this and thought no they're not gonna bulldoze it so planted it over here by the grapes and it really loves the shade and moisture right here so it has been growing even through this really hot summer we've had now there's some mercury weed Sometimes I don't chop things down just because they're pretty. This is almost like a, a desert poinsettia. Almost. Almost. It is a euphorbice. Uh, I wouldn't eat it. I believe it's toxic. But live and let live when it comes to pretty plants. No raspberries today. Grapes just wanted to grow up through the tree this year. All the way up. Oh, somebody chopped them. Got a vine up there. It's all the way up. The grapes just took over. Can't even get back there to mow anything. <clears throat> oh, one final plant. This is also yeah, this little in India. It's a butterfly bush. I would have to look up again what it does, but judging from its branches, how it'll have, let me find a good example. Most of it died off in the freeze, as you can see, that we had this year. It's the coldest weather this had ever experienced, but it almost has like a mint-like branch to it. So it can, I would consider this to be probably something to do with circulatory, and that is a nasty assassin bug. Close. Oh, kitty! You get out of that pampas grass. Alright, that's about it for today. This is Whitney signing out. Carolina Modulana, aka Marshmallow Plant. Take the roots out.